Hey, good evening, everybody. Hope you're having a good week so far. Welcome to our Wednesday night service today. If you have your Bibles, we'll be in Proverbs chapter 18 tonight. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs is in the Old Testament. It is one of the greatest books uh, about wisdom and gives us some things that we can learn uh, to help us be wise and be uh, good uh, disciples of Jesus Christ and of the Lord. And uh, I want to share with you a little something from Proverbs 18 tonight that will hopefully encourage you. Let's go ahead and pray and uh, ask the Lord to bless. Lord, I thank you for this week so far. I pray that you'll bless all of the viewers tonight. Help them to be encouraged by the Word of God. Help them to see something from Proverbs that will help them as they uh, continue to serve you each day. And Lord, I pray that we would just get a heart for others tonight. And I thank you for all that you do for us. Amen. All right, if you look at our picture real quick, you'll see uh, two uh, young people helping mom and dad in the kitchen, and they're doing the dishes, and it looks like they're having a good time. And uh, one of the cool things about helping out around the house is sometimes mom and dad will reward us uh, by giving us a little sticker. And I love stickers. Stickers are really fun. Uh, when I was in elementary school, I remember we had a sticker exchange day, and we all had our sticker books, and we would bring in stickers to class, and we would exchange those stickers amongst each other, and it was really fun because you'd get some really awesome stickers. I mean, stickers are just cool. They're fun. You can put them uh, in your sticker book. You can put them on your laptop. You can put them on your school books, uh, not you know on your covers, not in the school books, uh, and you can put them in your room, and, and they're just a lot of fun to have. I love stickers. And did you know that the Bible, believe it or not, uh, doesn't talk about stickers like you and I know them, but it describes uh, 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 something that you and I can do that kind of reminds me of stickers a little bit. Uh, the Bible actually says that you and I could be um, kind of sticky, a little bit sticky. And I don't mean like getting messy. I mean that we should uh, be sticky, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But before I do that, I want you to look at the stickers on the page there to the left, the scratch and sniff stickers. They were some of the best stickers ever. And, uh, you know, you, could, you smell the one smells like grass, one smelled like fruit, one smells, smells like pop and uh, cereal and that kind of thing. And, of course, the coolest stickers ever then is comic book stickers. But anyway, on. I want to show you what the Bible actually has to say tonight about sticking and proverbs 18 tells us in verse 24 it says a man that hath friends must show himself friendly and what that means is that you know if someone proverbs is trying to teach us wisdom here and give, help us to understand what it is to be a friendly person and if you want to be someone who has uh others in his life that care about him you want to have some friends in your life it, it helps us to be friendly in other words, if you want to have friends, you need to be a good friend. You need to be friendly. If you're not a friendly person, you're probably not going to have a lot of friends. If you're angry and grumpy and sad and mopey all the time and you're not friendly towards other people, um, you know, it, it's probably going to be hard for you to make friends. So one of the things that Solomon is trying to teach us here is that, you know, we can learn how to, to make friends by being friendly. And the Bible also continues on. King Solomon also says here that, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit tonight. You know, this whole, there is someone who is a friend of ours who sticks to us like a sticker. He's sticky. All right. He's always around. And that's the thing about stickers. It's like once you put them on something, <laughs> they're always there. And that's why sometimes mom and dad get a little upset with us when we put stickers on things that we shouldn't put them on, you know, uh, because they are hard to remove. It's hard to get them to come off. And maybe just saying, maybe mom and dad don't want us to put stickers of smiley faces or superheroes on their really fancy, nice vehicle, their car or van or truck or whatever. They get kind of upset when we do those kinds of things. But if we stick a sticker on something that's appropriate, you know, like maybe on our laptop covers or, uh, you know, in our books or our sticker books or wherever they're supposed to be, where we can enjoy them, uh, it's awesome. And the Bible is saying, listen, that there is a friend 
there is someone who is kind to us, someone who loves us, someone who encourages us, someone who supports us, strengthens us, someone who loves us, who sticks closer than even our brothers. Now listen, if you have a brother or a sister in your life, they are always there. They're with you all the time. And, you know, they always will be there. And, you know, brothers and sisters are awesome. But even if you're an only child, you understand this idea of having a brother or sister. You know, you understand that a brother is always going to be there. Maybe your friends have brothers and sisters. Maybe your uh, cousins have brothers and sisters. And you, you are smart enough to see that a brother is someone who is always around, someone who you can always depend on, someone you can always count on. And the Bible says that there are friend, there is a friend who is closer to us than even a brother. Can you think of who the Bible's talking about? Do you know who, he's, who, who Solomon is referring to here? That's right, the Lord, God. And I'll make an extension here, and I'll say Jesus. There is someone who you and I all know who is sticking to us, who is closer to us than even a brother. Now, what can we learn from this? Well, I, I want to show us two things tonight. Well, three things technically, but the first thing is that we need to remember to stick with Jesus. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but we need to stick with him. We need to be close to God. We need to be around Jesus all the time. And I'm thankful that God never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He's always here. It's you and I who decide to walk away from him from time to time. And the Bible says that we are to stick with him. How do we do that? Number one, how do I stick with Jesus? Number one, well, we need to love God. Mark 12, 30 says this, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, not with some of your heart, not you kind of love him, you half love him, you sort of love him. He says, no, love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. And that is the entirety of you as a person. That's all of you. It's your heart, your will, your mind, and your soul. All he, In other words, he says, I want you to love me completely. God says, love me with all that you have, with all of your strength. And he says, this is, you know, there was a person who was questioning God. What's the greatest commandment? Well, the greatest commandment is to love God. We are to love God with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. That's everything. We should be doing that. And you know what? Our brothers and sisters, they love us like that. You know, they love us all the time, even though we fight with them sometimes, even though we get in trouble with them sometimes. We know that they love us, and we love them. And the Bible is trying to show us here a beautiful picture that we need to stick with God by loving him, not treating him like, you know, he's some distant, far away God, but loving him with all of our hearts. Well, the other thing that the Bible says is that we are to love our neighbors. Look at this, Mark 12, 31. And the second is like the first, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these two commandments. The Bible is trying to teach us here that we need to love others. Our neighbor is a representation of everyone else other than ourselves. We described our family when he talks about our brother, and then he describes us when he says you should love God with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your soul. And the next thing he says is you need to love others. You need to love your neighbor, and you need to love them as you love yourself. Listen, I like myself a lot. You do too. You like that you know you have... Uh, the ability to, to, to eat and to sleep and to have a house over your head. You love that you can run around. You love that you can talk. You love that you can breathe. You love all these things about yourself. You love that you're smart. You love that you have the ability to maybe draw or paint, ride a bike, to play sports. You, you, you love a lot of things about yourself. God has gifted you with a lot of great, wonderful things and a lot of great, wonderful abilities, and you love those things. And the Bible says you ought not to be selfish now, and you need to love others too. Why? Because God loves you, and he also loves your neighbors, all right? He doesn't love just you. He loves everyone. For God so loved the world, right? John three sixteen. God loves everyone, and you ought to love other people too. You ought to love the same people that God loves. It's kind of like being in the same family. You know, when you love your brother, uh, you love them because you're part of the same family. Well, we're all part of God's family, and we need to love our neighbors or others around us uh, just like we love ourselves. And that's not always easy to do. Sometimes there's somebody in school that you may not like as much because they're not as nice to you. The Bible says it doesn't matter. You're supposed to love them anyway. Oh, by the way, uh, it also says that we're to be friendly towards them. 
If you want to, maybe you're having trouble getting along with somebody. Well, maybe you haven't been so friendly to them. Well, Pastor Chris, what if I'm friendly to them and they're not friendly back? That's okay. You don't have to be friends with everybody, but you can still love them. And that is not always easy to do, but that's what the Bible commands us to do. How can we love others? We, we do kind things for them. We encourage them. We love them in spite of their, their, their uh, behavior sometimes. And we pray for them. And we pray that they get saved so that they can be part of God's family. So Proverbs 18, 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Boys and girls, first thing I wanted you to learn tonight is we need to love God with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our soul, and all of our strength. The second thing is we need to love others as we love ourselves. I hope this will be an encouragement to you. Short lesson tonight, but I did that for a reason. Remember to love God and to love others by showing them the love of God.